Welcome to Cloud Infrastructure Services YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about how to perform a cybersecurity risk assessment checklist. Now, this is going to be a step by step template. So, let's not waste any time and let's just jump right inside our checklist. So, at number one, we have determining and ordering our assets. Well, assets are servers, client contact information, confidential partner documents, trade secrets, and so much other valuable data. The management, department representatives, and business users must determine a comprehensive list of assets and order accordingly. And after that, they must then establish a method for estimating the significance of each asset, considering its monetary value, legal standing, and significance to the organization as some criteria amongst others. Now at step number two, we have determining the threats. Now to effectively determine threats, you must consider the likelihood of several things like natural disasters and equipment placements in areas affected by them. And then you should know that a threat could endanger your company from natural disasters to viruses, hackers and other possible hazards. Basically, you want to establish or determine every possible threat, may it be a natural disaster or may it be a person who is going to hack into your organization. And once you have done that, you must also keep in mind the quality of products that you attain to decipher the likelihood of failure. Now, this is a very crucial step. So that is why it is considered as very vital. And once you have done that, you can move on to step number three, which is determining the vulnerabilities. More to add with regards to vulnerability is that a flaw that could allow danger to hurt your business. Now, software flaws can be found using audit reports. So you can use the NIST vulnerability database. Now, NIST is a standard and you can use information security test and evaluation like ST and E methods. And then you can go for penetration testing and automated testing and then after you have done that or you can maybe option out for automated vulnerability scanning programs that are available on the internet. After that, at step number 4, you need to evaluate controls. Now, to reduce or eliminate the likelihood that a threat or a vulnerability is going to exploit or damage your business, you need to examine the measures in place. Now, this includes a lot of different techniques. First one being encryption, second one being the identification and then third one being the use of authentication tools. Now, as their name suggests, these controls can also be divided into preventive and detective categories. Now, at number five, we have to evaluate incidents likelihood. Now, to evaluate incidents likelihood, you need to consider the type of vulnerability, the threat's source ability and intent, the presence and the efficiency of your controls and the likelihood of a vulnerability being exploited. Now, in the end, the likelihood of an assault or other unfavorable event is categorized using a high, medium and low scale. And based on that, you're going to prioritize them. After that, at number six, we have assessing the potential impact of a threat. Now, you need to examine the effects of an occurrence on the missing or damaged asset, taking into account the asset's purpose and any operation that relies on that specific asset. Now, to gather this data, you can always start with a business impact analysis report, which is called a BIA or a mission impact analysis report. A qualitative evaluation of a system impact could occur in the high, medium or low range. At step number seven, you need to prioritize essential cybersecurity risk. Now, the thing is that you need to prioritize the likelihood of risk and you need to sort out or tackle the risks that are going to occur most probably in the future. A risk level matrix is helpful for this kind of risk estimation as each risk scenario is categorized under the likelihood times impact. Now, this is not just likelihood, but it's likelihood times impact. Any scenario that exceeds this predetermined tolerance threshold should be prioritized so that you can reduce its risk to a level that is acceptable to the organization. Now, once you're done with the step number seven, at step number eight, you need to recommend controls. Now for a high level, as quickly as feasible, a plan of corrective actions should be created. So what you need to do is that you need to determine the steps necessary to mitigate the risk using the risk level guide. For a high level risk, you need to quickly come up with a plan and take corrective actions that are going to reduce that risk. For a medium level plan, you also need to create a plan, but you do not have to prioritize it at the first probability. And lastly, at step number nine, you need to record the outcomes. Now, Creating a risk assessment report is the process of capstone and aids management in the making the best choice possible about the budget, guidelines and other important factors. So that is why you need to record the outcomes. So there are three major things that you should consider when you're recording the output. 
that the report should cover each threat's corresponding vulnerability, assets at risk, impact on the IT infrastructure of your organization, chance of occurrence, and control measures. After that, the risk assessment report may also highlight important corrective actions to reduce several risks, especially of the higher priority. And each phase should include information on the associated cost and the commercial justification for the investment. That brings us to the end of this risk assessment template. But there is still one question that is to be answered that when to conduct a cybersecurity risk assessment? Well, in most organizations, it is recommended to run this risk assessment cybersecurity template or checklist once every year. Additionally, you can also check out the Office 365 and Active Directory auditing tool known as Infra SOS. Now, this Infra SOS helps users confirm their Active Directory and Office 365 users, which are compliant and secure from any potential cyber attack. And if you still want to learn more about this risk assessment template, then simply click the link in the description box to come to the step-by-step -step blog post guide created by Cloud Infrastructure Services. And if you have learned anything new in this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel.